Hello, this is Georgia551, and over a period of time, I'm going to show you a project that I'm doing in the basement. Now, some people are saying I'm wasting my money, but my plan is that every extra dollar I earn at work is going towards the house itself or anything important. My tax refunds and money I save by no longer feeding the vending machines at work is going towards a fun project, which is what we're showing you today. And what that is going to be, and hopefully it all comes out, is a very short candle pin bowling alley. By very short, the plan is it's going to be full size, but because... The house is only 32 feet long, the main house. The, yeah, the lane's not going to be very long. Now, there is a section that is nearly 50 feet long, which is right here. You can barely see. It's a workshop. Mostly donated tools from the homeowner that previously owned the place that didn't have a place to put anything. The light's not on, so... Yeah, let me just... Hit this button here and that function is currently not available or if I hit the one that has the light on it no that no it's just not going to do it so yeah you just have to take my word for it that it's a it is a workshop it's hard to see I mean got some tools there a lot of meh a lot of tools that are probably going to get thrown out because they're beyond its use. Seriously, we can't just... Let me hit the power. Alright, so we, we can't turn on the light so you can see, but... Anyway, so you can see... Uh, now, for one, we have a step. For two... The doorway is too narrow. And three, we have important things that would be in the way. But I think the, do the uh, donated washer and dryer and this somewhat not important, uh, you know, the boiler for the heat. Who needs that in New England? So... I have to stick to, this is the front of the house. And this is approximately where you're gonna stand, somewhere between here and here where you're gonna bowl. The only improvement I've done down here so far, and it needs another coat of paint, is this used to, of course everything's gonna be a project. This is what, yeah, this, uh door's a lost cause, but I'm showing you this because that's what the door looked like on the outside. And it wants to open back up. And now it's painted white. Although it, the camera definitely shows it is this was a window and they just put a sheet of plywood on it. So that looks darker than everything else. So that definitely needs yet another coat of paint. Two have been applied. The rest of the door looks fine. As for this side and this side, that'll be part of that'll be part of the uh, part of the project as we go along. And of course, we're going to need to do the same here. And we got to cover the. Uh, Sill, that is, that has rotted out a little bit, but I've poked around and whatever happened at some point is all that's happened because I can't pull any more out. So that problem is actually a thing of the past, but I probably should patch it. And you'll see all this gray batting, which is insulation that's on this wall makes kind of sense because it's at ground level more or less. 
Some of the things I also did is I WD-40 these windows. There's another window like this in the aforementioned the aforementioned uh, workshop and it grinds along this wall but when it decides to uh, not grind along this wall this thing works perfectly smooth there we go the only issue I have is there's no screen so critters can get in and these stupid curtains are going to go. Need to be, you know, uh, here's a new compound in there. I forget what they call it, but these windows, as well as the other one, were barred shut. Probably because, well, apparently this place had rodent issues. And that's why we're going to, I'm going to, have a screen put on the outside so you can have this open and have nice clean air there is there's more than one screen thing that goes into that door there's a panel that's the word I'm looking for there's a panel that you saw that was glass that can be removed and a screen panel can be put in so that is something and as we look more this way, you can see more batting, where in this case it really doesn't make too much sense. Now you see all this discoloration. This is actually from, after I clean this out, anything that was resting against the wall, it gets humid. It then just rotted away and stain the wall. Where nothing has been touching the wall, it's perfectly fine. Again, this batting, condensation, and humidity, when this stuff, whatever part of this stuff touched the wall, there's a discoloration. Moisture from that. And I was hoping that as we go along here, I was hoping that when I, this place was completely filled with junk, I was telling them hopefully I could put a bowling alley straight to the other side. And the owner said, well, you're going to have a problem because, yep, the house was built in the 40s. Records say 55, that's when the addition was put on. Some of the things that have been found by the plumbers date this to a World War II era house. And being a small house, this looks like World War II tract housing, which just makes it all that much more epic to own. The owner, the former owners, their sons left their pool table here. I've been after them to get this out of here for two months. They're ultimately... They're delayed on their project like I am on this one, so... You know, I've been nice about it. Technically, it was mine. I could throw it out, and legally, I can, but I'm, I'm not. They're going to come get it back, and I'm letting them do that. This was disgusting. There was all sorts of crap here, and of course, that bat fell down. I just have it all tucked in so it stays up vacuum the crap out of this again because of the humidity you can see where wood has been in contact and has rotted and you can actually see that there's a fungi there that'll all get removed and again stuff was leaning all against here which is why the discoloration exists and one of the first projects, and yeah, the floor is not exactly level, but I'm going to take care of that as we go along. The lane itself doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Horizontally, we'll try to get it nice and straight. 
can use shims and stuff to hold everything up. Anyway, right in here, in this area, will be the pin deck. And three feet back should be enough, decent enough space. Two feet along this piece will be the pit, the, uh, the backstop and all that stuff. Which means if I maximize things, you know, where my blurry feet are and that line that you can see that's next to it, it's roughly where the pin deck will be. It's not very long. Might be looking at 16, 17, 18 feet if I'm lucky. And that's to leave enough room to gently throw the ball, not wind up or your fist goes through the window. Not to wind up and let it rip. I do have candle pins. I do have balls, but I would like to get a new set for this. And I have been uh, given information on how to get new candle pins. I know how to get new bowling balls. So, yeah, there's some you know, old marks and this dirt. Well, like I said, we've got to prep this area because tomorrow the lumber for the major structures are coming in. It can somewhat be considered a usable lane when it's all said and done with the first round of stuff, but yeah, there, there were, I mean, just barely enough to do anything. So one of the things I want to do, and we see it's been attempted here, but not very well, is just fill in the cracks so that everything will be a little more. This, this section creaks a little bit. I shove some sealant down there maybe that'll stop if not at least we'll have it sealed up so I'm going to uh, grab some sealant and just seal in some of these holes okay that is for the door this minus the wood in the back is stuff for the bowling alley for the you know for the uh, backstop Ebony stain, that's probably going to be way more than what we need. But, you know, as the bo bowling balls hit the wood and maybe works its way through the stain, we have this and we can redo it. Cloth to make sure the plywood's good. Two sets of exterior screws. Because the base is going, well, we'll get to that when we get to that. Also, here's a simple quick crate stuff. Gotta love the lighting. I wish the camera would let me turn it on. Crack seal. And of course it says wear rubber gloves, but yeah, do we really need to? Plus I need to do this soon. So the next step is, I'm not gonna show you doing this. Well, maybe just a tiny amount of it. We'll do just a tiny bit. We're going to start right here. Can you see it? Yes, you can. Use my finger to put it in. You know, if this stuff dries really, really... See, it's not really hurting. It's just probably don't want it on there for very long. I'll come back with that paper towel and get rid of the access, excess or access to the excess. Fun and exciting, huh? Like I said, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm just 
hey, at least you get to see something happen. I'll smooth all that out. That'll be this video. Next, tomorrow, the lumber's supposed to be here. Show you what you're gonna do. Well, we got ourselves a, a light for the uh, pin plate, which I was hoping was a model that plugs into something, and it is, even though it doesn't show that, but that's good. And our delivery came in several days ago, it, and yeah, the lighting here is not the best. In fact, if we just do this, it'll be just a little bit better. But here we go. This is the start. Obviously, this is not everything we're going to need. This is to get it started. Now, the pressure-treated wood is going to be the deck the lane will be sitting on. As apparently there is or was a history of flooding, although I think it was more because of an old, an old water tank that busted and flooded because there used to be an old tank that was sitting here and it was in very sad shape and that's probably what the flooding was. Well, that and going to drill a ton of holes into this stuff so that so the wood can breathe underneath because if in a damp basement there's no room for it to breathe there could be mold growing and the underlayment would rot also they didn't have four by four sheets so i had to get the full size for eight no big deal because the other parts can be used in other places and several sheets of plywood you might notice one is sticking out next to the others and that's done on purpose because as you can see on this and pretty much every other one it's a five ply board not so much for this one this one not up to snuff but I think I'm going to use that piece for the floor of the of the pit. So no real loss there. And I'm sure that making the uh backstop and everything of the of that nature out of plywood's not the smartest of moves. But I've seen plywood handle quite a bit of abuse. So, yeah, even things heading 40 miles an hour that are round or maybe even uh, candle pin shaped. But it's not really being built to, to that kind of standard anyway. But worst case scenario, I could always replace it with boards. The gutters will be the only thing not made of pressure treated because it's not going to be in contact and it's going to be slightly elevated. And that is a regular two by six. So how the gutters will go is the lane will be here, let's say. This will be attached to the lane here. And then the side wall for the gutter will be attached to the side here and sticking up. So it'll be the full length of this board, the gutter itself. Although there's only one of those, and that's because that's going to be the gutter where the pin plate is. And speaking of the pin plate, we got to build that thing. Let's see how far we get and where we get. I can't believe how much I suck at this. Hey, I'm worried that I'm going to run out of money that's allocated to this project and will be replenished usually every month and I'm going things are going slow enough that I probably will procure more money prior to finishing what I've got anyway so all I've done was we got this scrap piece of masonite there that's the worst 
and that's the worst, but usable for something else in the project. But here we have the pin plate and the underlayment. And it ain't perfect, but it lines up pretty good. I mean, it's like a 16th off there. Dead on here. I mean, as, every, as, as I shimmy this along, it lines up better. I mean, that's not going to really matter. And over here, it matters even less. I mean, that edge is right on. And this edge is just a hair off. But I also see that I kind of went a little off the line, too. So, yeah, the pin plate actually came out okay. Now, the thing I haven't done, obviously, as you can easily see, is I did not mark where the pins go. Because I wanted to get that stuff done first. So maybe some of the other things I'll do right now. Since I don't really have a lot of time is I'll probably cut one of the lane pieces. There's going to be two of them. So it would be 16 feet and some odd inches to the head bin. And the sidewalls and and the backboard is gonna stop just short, like two feet seven or something like that over there at the corner of that room. And it's gonna extend the full eight feet. So similar to a, you know, similar to the masking unit wall, it goes not nearly as much as the candle pin lanes really do or any bowling lane, but it, will protrude out so that, well, so that the light underneath will be able to shine on the lights better or the pins. It's all up in the air. I might rotate and move things and find a way to get the full three feet from there to there without having to move much of anything. So, and another thing that was brought up and I've seen in code is that nothing three feet or closer to combustibles like this furnace we're well away from that you can kind of see this line okay but that's significantly closer but whatever anyway might you know finagle and massage the position of things to get a full three foot back there might lose want it to be at least two feet where that bump out is so that's where i'm at right now so maybe i'll just cut another lane piece just so i'll have that much more done because i gotta go somewhere soon so i got most of this pin deck put together minus the pin deck itself that'll be another time and another thing is that'll take a moment to lay out the pins and where they go. But anyway, this didn't come out exactly straight, but you know, I put one side pretty flush and then took a hammer to hammer this somewhat close to uh at least on one side close to a square. And I solely base that on the edges of the plywood that our original factory edge, which may or may not be perfect, but one thing that definitely isn't, as you can see, there's a gap. Not as much there, but definitely on this side. You can see there's a gap. And that's not going to cut it. No pun intended. So my plan here is I've cut the the joist that's going midway, and of course I'm drilling holes so that air can ventilate because basements are generally damp. So basically I'm just gonna drop this sucker in. I measured it, it should fit, which means it probably won't. also 
crooked. Yeah, I measured it, and sure enough, I'm gonna have to massage this in. But once it's in, I'm gonna put it down at the bottom. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the very bottom as far as it can go, so it's touching the so it's touching the substrate, and screw it in. That way, when I screw it into said joist, we will not have a grossly exaggerated here by my hand, you know, a inward bending pin plate, which is not what we want. So that's not going in easily. I th thought I measured it right. I even cut it slightly under what I measured. Still not going in. We'll come back. Wow, this is one very old yardstick. I wonder if it was bought when the house was built in the 40s or the addition in the 50s. Anyway, here in the United States, you have a 10-digit phone number, area code, three digits plus the four that represent an individual home. Before we had to dial area codes because of then cell phones, you just had seven digits, the prefix and the four numbers. This is how old this one is. Yeah, four digits, but only one number before it. I don't know if that's party line or whatever, but that's old. Anyway, back to this, because, of course, if it can go wrong, it always does, is I nailed, I use what you're supposed to, you know, nothing like sandpaper, but a file to just knock off the edges so I can get the board in there, and I did. Why do it right when you can do it my way? And, of course, when I screwed everything in, of course, the joist had to ride up. So, yeah, there's still a gap there. I stood on this end, hoping that it might have, yeah, gap is still present. Well, that went right like anything else. If it were to go right, the world would probably implode in a fiery death ball. Anyway, uh, now I'm gonna put it on here. And yeah, the floor is not exactly the straightest. So I'm gonna find where the high points are and see if I can chisel those uh, high points out of here. Then I can start actually lining it up so that I can get a, a bowling lane that's you know, pretty much aligned with the window, more or less. Wow, it took a lot of screws to get this thing straight. Anyway, we got the three there and the three there. It's pretty level. But back here, that didn't happen. We've had to put in a screw in the middle of each of the span. And over here, that was a mistake. And I can't get that thing out either. So the, the joist was there. So I've got it relatively positioned and I do have it. So this is the gonna be the end of the lane. And yeah, you're gonna be close to the window, but you're gonna be standing here. And I am making it so you're not supposed to huck the ball. That is a definitive. I don't want people hucking the ball. So I got it roughly in position where there's room for the gutter. Room for the gutter there, although anything on this side, the gutter, We'll be here. There's not going to be much room. So this is where cutting the pieces for the uh, for the sideboards and and the uh, kick and the kickboards, which really won't fit the meaning in this particular setup. 
very short there, but if it's a gutter ball, it'll just go over there and it's all going to be covered. No ball or pins going to hit concrete. Over here, again, I'll have, you know, build around that so not to damage the closet that's there. But there's enough room there and I don't know if this is going to pick up, but it ain't perfect, but that's about as close to level as you can get. And that's just simply plopping it here. And, yeah, there is a high spot. I think it's on this side. Yeah, I'm going to figure out how to shim this up. Because it's perfectly level over there. So it should be okay over here. And I'm not saying it may not be dead on. Okay, it's just a hair off. But I've seen pin plates far worse off than that. So yeah, we gotta raise that end just a hair. And it'll bring things even closer. It's it's still not perfect. It's, but I mean it's really ridiculously close. Like I said, I've actually seen worse yeah, at real places. Anyway, that's about it. At least for now, because in my world, it's getting a bit late and I gotta call it a day. So the next thing is I'm gonna install the gutter piece there and the gutter piece there. Then figure out the uh, sidewalls. Well, there was a bit of a surprise. And it literally came with no warning, as I mentioned, is I was planning on getting this stuff brand spanking new, but unfortunately, Mason's Bowling Center closed for good. They couldn't sell the place to someone who would run it, so they then put it up for sale for anyone who wants to do whatever with the property. And within a week, the state of Massachusetts closed the deal. So who knows what that place is going to be, but it won't be a bowling alley. So the day that I found out, which was a day and a half after the fact, and a day after they posted it, I went down and bought some gently used candle pins and mostly reconditioned balls. There's three that are, were still in, in use house balls. So... I did not go for the brand new stuff. They're reserving the brand new stuff they still have in boxes for the candle pin bowling alleys that are buying things. So, like I said, these are gently used. I mean, they almost, they almost look brand new. There's just barely anything on these. There's one that's a little rough, but that's a, it's a couple that have a little wear and tear, obviously. And is this the box with the, well, this is a box with some of the old, yeah, these are the in-use house balls. But I got this and four others completely reconditioned and finished. So the progress on this project has been very slow. It's been a month. I still just have a finished pin plate minus the pin plate itself. I just don't have a lot of time and I had other projects that needed to get done. I guess the moisture content was a bit rich. The uh, circular saw did not like cutting through these pieces of lumber. Although, yeah, more so the second piece than the other one. I guess it's moisture content. Anyway, so yeah, the like I've mentioned, this didn't quite go exactly right. But in a way, like I've said before, it's not a bad thing because when I put the next section together, it won't go past that. So I guess, you know, there's a silver lining to that being a thing. Anyway, it's only secured by three screws right now. And I did have this temporarily 
trying to hold it up so it wouldn't collapse in on itself, but the screws are holding up fine. Yeah, the pin plate is not on there. In fact, it's resting right there right now because I want to get the structure built. And like I said, it's relatively level. It's not perfect, but if we lay the pin down, it doesn't seem to want to roll. Give it a little push. Give it a little push. And, all right, I might be just giving it a little too much that way. Yeah, there is a slight four roll, but I mean, a lot of bowling alleys don't have perfectly flat plates anyway. You've seen that at Mason's Palace, Putnam Street. Putnam and Palace especially because they're on an upper level. Might push that way. Might push that. Well, that was a little much of a push. So let's give it the same. Yeah, let's very slight the other way. But, yeah, more or less it's fairly straight. Like I said, it's not perfect. And a lot of bowling alleys are worse than that. So I did cut these pieces to equal the distance between there and there from the bottom. So now I'm going to do is stand that pin up roughly where it's going to be and put it in well, where the back row is going to be about two inches away from the edge. And then from roughly a six foot person's point of view, I'm going to stack some lumber so I can do that. Set this at the height that they can just see the top of the head pin. Not the head pin, the back row. Alright, so this definitely needs a second coat of black stain. I'm using stain because it penetrates wood. Whereas if you use paint, it chips off a lot easier. Whereas, yeah, you could chip off layers of this and some of the stain will still be there. It definitely needs a second coat. It's definitely noticeable, but... Got the general idea. It's supposed to be not exactly uh, wood color per se. And yeah, that wall definitely flares out. And one of the things I do want to do at some point is when I get the materials for the second run is Gonna have two by four walls helping to support everything and keep everything in shape. Right now it's not exactly sturdy, but it's sturdy enough that it's keeping its shape. And it'll help probably pull that side in a little bit. So I mean, yeah, it's gonna need another coat. And then we'll say maybe There'll be a pin plate attached, and this light will be put up in there for because that's going to be the deck light ultimately. And the idea here is that when you stand back here, yes, it's dark, that you see a very blurry black. There it goes. Most of what you're going to see is black, so you're not going to see much. I mean, it looks black already on camera, but, you know, a little better in person. So, yeah, that's what I got right now. We're getting pretty close to wrapping up part one. So, like I said, it needs another coat. The pin plate, which is right there. Put all the pins on it. It's not perfectly level, but it's a lot more level than how uh, most pin plates are in actual bowling alleys anyway. So that'll be it for now. We'll come back with, I think, the end of part one, as I mentioned. A lot of dust flying around. Anyway, halfway there on the length. And as we go, of course, as we all know, 
basement floors, especially when they're really old and cracked, they tend to not be even perf even new. They're not perfectly flat. So I've tested that, and it was close. What I'm thinking of doing is leaving the when I make the pin plate, I'm going to leave the screw holes exposed so we can raise and lower any of the corners as need be. But same idea here, except it's an eight foot section. The, uh, the framework is a hair wide, but whatever, that's fine. And of course, because it's a damp basement, there's vent holes even on the middle piece that is struck for you know for structural integrity plus yeah rigidity. And of course this this is going to need support. It it's just built so that it's there and can build, you know, get most of this. So what's gonna happen? and maybe I'll do a section on it is because the eight foot section would come very close to the door and almost block you off, not really in terms of pedestrian traffic, is the next eight feet will be done in three pieces, a four foot section and two two foot removable sections. So if you had to ever haul anything big in and out of this door, likely pertaining to that thing, or that thing, or possibly the air conditioner, which is outside, but uh, da, 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 that thing can take a four foot, four foot section of gutter out and those two pieces out and there's plenty of room to move and this table can be moved as well yeah we're far enough along now that we can call this a segment and like I said we get to put structure there we just built it enough that we can build everything around it and position everything because if we use it as it is it's just screws decking screws holding plywood together. Outside of where the gutters are, it's just gonna rip itself apart. So we're going, we're gonna need to have a structure to hold everything in place. So that's just, like I said, to get things going and some progress. Anyway, that'll be it for this particular segment. George F551 saying hope you enjoyed and have a good one.